Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, horror, I want to talk to you about the most 1970s horror novels that the 1970s has to offer. So I'm not sure if that introduction made <laughs> any sense at all. So let me explain. So a while ago, somebody in the comments suggested I should do videos where I talk about like the best horror novels of certain decades. So best horror novels of the 70s, the 80s and so on. And I, I thought about that and started kind of coming up with the list. But then I thought it might be more interesting to talk about the horror novels from the 70s that are most representative of that decade, both kind of socially and culturally, but also in terms of, of themes in horror fiction. Um, so that's what I'm going to try and uh, talk about now. Um, we'll see We'll see how I get on. So this is not a best horror novels of the 1970s list, although there are some excellent novels on this list. Um, it's more, as I say, books that I think are representative of, of that decade. Um, but before I talk about the books, I just kind of wanted to, to set the scene in terms of my perception of, of what the 1970s was like. Um, and I am, I'm saying this as a child of the 70s. So I was born in 1973. Um, so I did live in the 70s, although I don't remember it quite as well as I do the 80s. The 80s is kind of my decade, if you like. Um, and I may well do a, a follow-up um, version of this video where I talk about books from the 80s. Um, so let's think about the 1970s then. So it started 25 years after the end of the Second World War. And that, you know, 25 years did not feel like a, a long time, does it? And when I think about, you know, how I felt growing up in the 70s, it felt like the, the Second World War was ancient history. Um, but clearly, um, clearly it wasn't. So I think that the shadow of the Second World War does loom over, um, you know, did loom over the 70s. And then also, obviously, you've got the Cold War and the, the you know, the continuing tension between the Soviet Union and, and the West. Um, so you kind of got that as a backdrop. And then you've got a load of interesting kind of cultural stuff happening. So obviously, um, you know, you've got the civil rights movement in, in the States through the 50s and 60s um, and, you know, feminism and the women's lib movement, you know, starting up in, in the 60s as well. Um, and then the whole kind of counterculture movement. So, you know, kind of hippies and drug culture and things like that starting as well so america really shifting away from the uh, the kind of cookie cutter version of america that we that we saw in the 50s so i think that's that's important as well and then i think linked to that you've got people starting to worry about things like the, the disintegration of the like nuclear family unit so you know that's starting to happen divorce rates starting to rise and things like that and people starting to really question the establishment so and, and in particular i think in the in the 70s starting to question the religious establishment so more and more people um you know not identifying you know in, in the west as christians anymore um and more and more you know questioning about the place of of religion in society um and then also people starting to think, you know, after after the 50s, which was really, you know, kind of the the boom in the West of, of uh, capitalist industrialism after the Second World War. So people starting to question, you know, the morality of capitalism and things like that. And then also like the start of the environmental movement. So people starting to to think about the environment a bit more and, and our impact on the environment. Um and all of these things clearly are still things that are being played out today. So, you know, the conversation may have moved on in some of these things. You know, environmentalism clearly is is much more central to um, our daily, you know, our daily thinking about things now and much less of a, of a fringe thing. Um, but I think, you know, it, investigation or, or thinking about the role of capitalism and, and the impact it has on our society, you know, still continues. And clearly kind of culture and identity type politics is massively um, influential and, and important at the moment. Um, so, yeah, so the 70s was a long time ago, um, but there is, you know, the, the echoes of it, you know, con continue to sound, don't they? Right. So let me talk through. Let me talk to, through the 10 books. So this is... Um, this is the list I came up with and we'll see what um, you know we'll see what people think in the comments see if people think I've chosen the right books see if people think I've missed books but I think there's there's 10 books here which are quite representative of the decade so these are presented in no particular order um, 
and thinking about horror in the 70s. So let's think quickly about horror in the 70s. So I think the late 60s um, and into the 70s was a real boom time for low budget horror. So different types of horror cinema um, happening in, in the States in particular. So films like uh, Night of the Living Dead, which came out in 68, was it 68 or 69? Towards the end of the 60s anyway. So, you know, Night of the Living Dead and then things like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, really influential, low-budget horror movies. And those films, I think, did have an impact on, uh, you know, on, on popular fiction as well. Um, and then obviously in the 70s, you've got the, the um, you know, the the beginnings of the career of two of the giants of, of horror fiction. So Stephen King in, in the States and James Herbert in the UK. So both of them, you know, started their careers in the early 70s. Um, so, and, and both are represented in this list. So let's, so let's talk about the list then. Um, so first book I've got is Salem's Lot by Stephen King. So I think this is an interesting book for two for two reasons one it talks quite a lot about religion so there's a like the priest character in it who's quite central and you're starting to get that kind of distrust of of religion um and then you've also got this kind of reinvention of older um horror themes characters things like that so in this case vampires and if you think about the people who were you know becoming adults and starting their own families in in the 70s they were the baby boomers so the people who have been born in the post you know the post-war era um, and i think a lot of, you, you see a lot of the influence of kind of early cinema on on these people um so you know people like stephen king who grew up on a diet of like universal horror movies from from the 30s and then the kind of movies of the of the 50s um you see that influence and you see them starting to reinvent those that you know those traditions and you see it a lot in cinema as well so you think about like the star wars films um you know george lucas who who is of that same generation massively influenced by like you know world war ii movies by the you know adventure adventure serials of the of the kind of 40s and 50s and things like that so starting to reinvent and put their own spin on you know previous previous types of culture and i think stephen king definitely does that in in salem's lot by taking the, the you know the character of the vampire um, and introducing it into you know kind of modern small town america uh, setting so i think salem's lot is a really interesting um, you know, not um, not my favourite King book by any means, but I think it's a really interesting and very seventies King book. Okay, so coming to my side of the Atlantic, then uh, we've got a book from James Herbert, uh, The Spear. So. Not his most famous book. Uh, obviously, The Fog and the Rats, which are better known, were published in the 70s as well. I think The Spear is interesting because it, it's kind of a throwback to World War II as well, or at least, you know, really shows the influence of World War II um, on culture and on, on people's thinking in the 70s. So the spear of the title is is the spear of, I can't remember the, the guy's name, but the spear that stabbed, you know, that stabbed Jesus on the cross um, and was a... Um, was something that the Nazis were kind of obsessed with. So there's this whole thing that was coming out in the 70s about, you know, the kinds of Nazi interest in the occult and things like that. And the spear is part of that. And in fact, I think Herbert got sued by the guy whose name was Trevor Ravenscroft or something like that, I think, who had written a book, uh, a non-fiction book um, about the, the spear. Um so the spear is an interesting novel because it kind of mashes together Herbert's kind of normal horror stuff with a very seventies style of thriller about kind of Nazi hunters and things like that. So a, a fun book that mashes together those two things. But I think you know we forget, as I said at the start, we forget how close the Second World War was to the nineteen seventies. We think of the seventies as being like the era of disco and things like that, where in a lot of cases it, it was also an era of people you know still coming to terms with with what had happened in, in World War Two. Um, moving on then, so um, a, a non-fiction book uh, in inverted commas, The Amityville Horror by Jay Anson. So I think this is a pretty terrible book. I think a lot of the writing in this book is awful. Um, I've never read a book with so many exclamation marks in it. Um, but it is an interesting book because of it. A, because, of the, you know, there was this growing interest in, um, you know, kind of the, the occult and devil worship and things like that in the 70s, which I think goes hand in hand with the you know the kind of 
rejection of um, of traditional organised religion, which I talked about earlier on. So I think the, the Amityville Horror is very much representative of that, but also talks about, you know, the impact of of things on, on a family. So that, that examination of the family unit um, is, I think, something that comes up again and again in, in 70s horror. Um, so definitely something that happens in, in the Amityville Horror. And then you've also kind of got a shadow of, of urban crime, if you like, in, in the Amityville Horror as well, in that the Amityville House... Um, is a house where like a terrible crime took place and that's why it's you know supposedly haunted um so yeah not a good book but i definitely think a, a representative book um moving on then so so another one that examines religion uh, the exorcist by william peter blatty so i think you know a fantastic book but also i think quite a conservative book in terms of it being about you know the, the the battle between good and evil so it's it's you know a book that very much portrays the, the the catholic church as the heroes of the peace um and you get you know these these two noble priests um you know taking part in this in this exorcism to to save the soul of a girl apparently um apparently possessed by a demon so um a, a book that seems to be on the um on the on the more traditional side of that debate about the role of uh, the, the role of religion in in everyday life um Moving on then uh, to Jaws uh, by Peter Benchley. Um, so, you know, I talked a bit at the start about us, you know, about society starting to be more aware of the impact of, of you know, industrialisation on, on the environment. So Jaws isn't directly about that by any means. Um, but I do think it's a, I, I do think it's an interesting book in terms of it kicking off the, um, the whole kind of animal attacks genre. So being, you know, the first really big hit of that. Um, and making us think a, a lot more about our relationship with nature generally. So not necessarily about our impact on the environment, but about this, you know, the kind of ongoing battle, if you like, between man and nature embodied in this in this book by, um, you know, the characters of the three guys on the boat and, and the massive shark. Um, moving on then, so something, something very different, Harvest Home by Thomas Tryon. Uh, so a book I did review on the channel not that long ago, actually. So I think this is uh, I don't think it's a great book. I think it I think it does a lot of things really well. I think where it's interesting is um, in its examination of folk horror um, and the um, the kind of intersection of, of people from the city and, and people from the country. So in Harvest Home, this guy from the city and his family move out to this this small town in the in the countryside where there are still all these, you know, kind of weird old traditions going on. Um, so there's there's a lot of folk horror, as I said, woven into it. There's a there's also to an extent a, a discussion of feminism. Um, so it's very much a kind of matriarchal society um, that this guy and his family end up moving into. And you do see that clash again and again between the male character and some of the powerful um, female female characters in the um, in the town that they've moved to. Um, so I think it I, I think it does two things interesting. And I think and I think that that theme of um, kind of rural versus urban is one that comes up again and again, particularly in horror cinema in the 70s. So things like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which I've talked about, um, really, you know, really plays on that where you've got, you know, people from the city coming into um, a rural environment and, you know, being disruptive and, and getting attacked because of that deliverance that, you know, the book and movie um, is another really good example of that. Um, Right, next we have uh, Let's Go Play at the Adams by Mendel Johnson. So I think this is a fantastic book. Um, I did a video on it uh, on, on it and The Girl Next Door um, on the channel a while ago. So this is a book about um, this group of children who, who basically imprison their babysitter um, and torture her. So an incredibly disturbing book, but really interesting in its examination of the family unit again in, in the 70s. And what's interesting in this book is that the, the family unit is not present at all. The kids are on their own because their parents have gone have gone away and left them with this babysitter. And when the kids are left to their own devices, they do terrible things. So when that family unit isn't there to, to protect and guide them, um, they go completely out of control. So it's kind of a Lord of the Flies type scenario to an extent, um, but even more disturbing than, than, than Lord of the Flies. Um, and also, I think this this theme of 
disruptive children, demonic children, is one that really starts to to become central to, to horror in the 70s. And it's something, you know, we still see in movies and things like that today. But the 70s is where you see the, you know, the big upswing in, in books about nasty kids. Um, and there's another one to follow. OK, next up then, Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice. Um, so I think this is an interesting book in terms of its kind of re-examination of, of vampire law. So I've already talked about that a bit with uh, with Salem's Lot. So Anne Rice doing that again, but also because it, it, it brings in a lot of examination of sexuality and different sexual orientations and things like that as well. So, you know, the 70s following uh, the kind of hippie movement of the late 60s and discussion of kind of free love and things like that. So I think society was starting to consider the fact that there was more to sexuality than the traditional heterosexual married couple. And I think Interview with a Vampire really starts to examine that a bit more, but does it through a kind of lens of, of, of horror um, which makes it feel kind of otherworldly and therefore a bit safer. And I think horror and, and fantasy and science fiction have a really important role to, to play in our examination in society of, of things like that because they um, because they, they put this filter between between the reader or viewer and the things that they are watching, because it's all, you know, because it's horror, because it's fantasy, it's all obviously make-believe. And I think that allows creators to to examine quite interesting and challenging themes. And I think that's one of the things that, that Rice does in Interview with the Vampire. OK, moving on then, two books to go. Uh, the next one is another one with a demonic child. Um, this time it's Damien, and the book is The Omen by David Seltzer. Um, so Seltzer wrote both the uh, the screenplay for the movie The Omen uh, and this novelisation. Um, I think it's interesting because of two things. So again, you've got the kind of that examination of religion. And again, like The Exorcist, I think it's quite a conservative view of religion. Um, so, you know, you literally have the Antichrist as a, as a character coming into the world to cause harm. Um, but you've also got this examination of, of the family unit and this notion of a, you know, a demonic child within the family. Um, you know being disruptive and I think you know with the the kind of breakdown of the or the beginning of the breakdown of the traditional family unit in the in the 70s you start to get people worrying about you know what will kids be like if they don't have a proper family around them so you know that's definitely examined to an extent in let's go play at the adams um, i think it, it it's definitely you know the, the omen plays on that fear as well um and I think it's, you know, something that that continues to be thought about today. So, you know, demonic children in horror continue to be, you know, a, a real theme uh, up until today. And anyone who's a parent, I think, can can understand that fear, can understand the fear of your children being out of control. Um, and, you know, how do you as the you know responsible parent deal with that? Um, so I think The Omen is, you know, one of the first books and movies that really examines that, but does it in a, in a really quite fun way. Um, finally, then, uh, so I've started with the Stephen King book. Let's finish with the Stephen King book as well. Um, this one is The Stand. So the 1978 version uh, rather than the, um, the 1990s version. So. Again, I think this is, you know, it's kind of an eco-horror book, isn't it? So a, a virus taking out the world. Um, but again, you've got that interplay of, of religion as well. So a, a very religious book, despite the fact that, that a lot of King's work seems to be um, anti-religious um, or certainly questioning of, uh, of traditional um, established religion. Um, so very much a book about the battle between good and evil. Um, but set against this 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 landscape of a um, of a, a world that's been destroyed by nature. So I think playing into two of those big themes of the seventies again, um, kind of environmentalism uh, and the examination of of religion. So I hope you found that interesting. Do let me know what you think of my choices and let me know if you think I've picked out the right themes from the um, from the 70s as well. Let me know what ones you'd add. Um, and as always, thanks very much for watching. Hope you're safe and well out there. Hope you're really good stuff and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.